and uh, welcome back to Comic Book Wednesdays, or we're a weekly series where we talk about comic books. Uh, we're your hosts, I'm Ian. I'm back, and I'm Al. <laughs> Whoa, and I'm Shane. Uh, if you're enjoying our uh, our content, uh, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Listen to that. Uh, 100 people in Germany listen to them talk about comic books. Jazzy's here. <laughs> He, he doesn't is. know he's here. But he's here. <laughs> he's a ghost. Jazzy's going to talk about comic books with us. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Batman, we're back. Uh, volume, uh, we're in issues, uh, was it, four, five, and six of Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, uh, Court of the Owls. And, uh, well, Al, let's see have you lead us off today, just because uh, we didn't really get to hear from you last week. So, I'm really enjoying these books. I think they're fantastic. The art is amazing. The story is really good. Um, this it, couple of issues was a little odd, but still good. You know, um... I'm really enjoying that they're actually showing Batman be a detective and figure stuff out rather than just, you know, off off book, he figures shit out, you know what I mean? So I yeah. enjoy that, but I don't read a lot of Batman, so I don't know if that's a, a, you know, thing that happens all the time or if they show him actually figuring out the stuff, but I'm, I'm enjoying them. I think they're really good. It depends on what writer, you know, of course. Uh, but yeah, I, can, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, this a strong point in this book is Batman being a detective. Um, make the argument for a good detective or not, because there's a secret organization that runs Gotham under him, you know, and he has no fucking clue that's there. <laughs> you know? Uh, but nonetheless, Batman is being a detective. Uh, and the the art is fantastic. I very much Batman the Animated S Series reminiscent, at least for me. Like it just feels like that mixed with realism, so it's kind of cool. Uh, so the first issue we had here, uh, well, I guess where we left Batman off, he was uh, he got blown up, and we got to see him escape. What you guys think? I want to, I want to Shane, hear. go ahead. No, Al's okay. getting out easy here. <laughs> um, honestly, like it was, it started off kind of interesting because, like you know, once again he goes to the like they didn't count on me, you know they didn't plan on me escaping when I did, and then you know he kind of talks about, you know how he's, I really like the backstory of, I think that this was the one that went into it was the. How he looked into the court after his parents died. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I love that backstory. But like, I just imagine him as this kid trying to figure out the why because, you know, something traumatic happens to you. Your mind initially goes to why did it happen? It can't be senseless. Yeah, it can't be senseless. And so he like looked into it. He did all these things, and it led him to a building covered in dust. Nothing. Right. Nothing. I wonder how close he was though, because like you do see like the owl stuff there, you know, and we now we know in hindsight that the court exists. So like, how close was young Bruce as this detective? Makes you think, you know. Yeah. I have to wonder, like, just with the way that they treated him in this issue, like with the the Talon coming after him in the end. If they had left him there, and we're just like, oh, he's just a kid, he's gonna die, whatever, the problem's gonna solve itself. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we later learned that that was what they had intended. Oh yeah, I mean, they they lure him to a trap type thing. That would, uh, I feel like that would be totally feasible as far as like what the court would want to do. You don't have to kill the kid; you just lead him to his own demise. Yeah, I mean, so that 
again, I think what also shines in these books is the internal like monologue that Batman kind of gives us. The um, he talks about like when he's escaping the explosion, he talks about how like the the trip wire, the most dangerous thing isn't the explosion. It's like being in this unknown, you know. And he, he's talking about like as he's doing this, he's escaping from the owls, and you get like this internal monologue how Batman kind of like assesses the situation. I think it's really fascinating because um, it's not something you really see. You can't really get that in the movies, like the internal monologue. I really mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, you guys were kind of talking about that uh, last week. I re I listened and you know like it was kind of. I forget what movie you compared it to the oh the uh sure. the Sherlock Holmes yeah mm -hmm. which I thought that was really interesting as well it, it's it would be really cool to see it in that style of of a movie for Batman it would be really cool um and it's I think like in the beginning of the Batman with uh, Pattinson as Batman you get a little bit of it he's like kind of talking. Um, as like you get the scene of Gotham and I felt like that's kind of like why I, I like that movie as it started up because it just felt very comic booky to me mm -hmm. um, see I didn't get that from that movie I'm I might have to rewatch it because I really didn't enjoy it the first time I watched it but you should watch the long Halloween and then watch it, or read the long halloween and then watch that i don't know it was very reminiscent of that to me even though it doesn't follow that story all that well right uh, just so long out. halloween was um oh jesus zach <laughs> um was uh <laughs> the black mask guy right i don't think black mask at least not in the comic was the villain for long halloween um, I believe it, it ended up being like a Falcone, uh, his son. Oh, okay. Directory. Shane, the Long yeah. Halloween had a lot of a lot of guessing, but it was one of the. Um, there was this really random kind of side character that nobody had thought would amount to anything. Right. Like, kind it made you think, like, it was all these, like, A-list villains. But in the end, you just see uh, this guy who... And then it was his wife, also, who was, like, helping him with it. That was wild. That was a twist. I enjoyed that. That's a good gotcha. Point. Worth the read. Maybe we'll check it out in a couple months when Al forgot about the twist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this book's good. You get some more dick talking to Bruce, you know, maybe you should take some rest, and he talks about, that's when he kind of talks about the court, and how he's like, I know it doesn't exist, because I investigated it, you know, and they don't exist, I, I, I know for a fact. Uh, but of course, we know Which, it's a load of baloney, but... To add that, I do feel like it's kind of interesting, because in the previous issue, there was so much evidence that he found like dating all the way back to these prior years and yet as this detective as, you know as he is he's like okay this could be a giant fear tactic mm -hmm. they could have you know used certain things to make it look older than it actually was mm -hmm. they could just purposefully be messing with me yeah. and i like that even then he's still trying to run everything through this hardcore logic filter that i, I just love that about batman you know, you gotta, he's looking everything, combing it with a fine tooth, you know, comb, like, he's pulling everything back and looking at it as the most logical way possible. Um, it's fascinating. And then he takes it one step further and he starts to find more and more evidence and he's like, he pulls up the grave of his uh, ancestor, Alan Wayne, and mm -hmm. he's like, you know what, like, I gotta go back to the sewers and see what I can investigate even further. And he ends up finding the labyrinth, you know, and uh, getting into the heart of the court themselves. So it's absolutely fascinating. And, like, I'm paging through the book as I'm talking about it, just mostly because I love looking at the art. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I was almost forgetting 
to take notes because I got so wrapped into that story of the second issue when he was in the labyrinth. I had to like physically remind myself, like, okay, I need to, I need to take notes. I need to take screenshots to talk about this. I can't just be excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well, speaking of your screenshots, um, let's do that second issue. What do you got from the second issue we can like focus on? Yeah, totally. So um, I took a lot of screenshots of the two of them how it showed the Talon, like, getting more owl-like features, and how, like, as, you know, Batman is in this labyrinth, you know, it talked about how many days, and he's just like, you know, I found this fountain, it could be poisoned, but I'm just so damn thirsty, like, I have just to take the risk. Sip. Yeah, just one sip, and, like, he's really starting to, you know... Not succumb to it, but it's really the, the issues in the artwork are showing the level of torture that they're putting him through. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, like, <laughs> we had a funny moment where, like, we couldn't figure out if the app was being screwy and we couldn't read the comics in the right orientation, or, like, was the author, author and artist trying to, like, show Batman's mental state by flipping the pages around on us and I go and look back at my hard copy and the pages are literally sideways and upside down and I'm like oh <laughs> this is this is what it's uh, it's just being Batman's stupid. mental state yeah it's Batman's mental state it was in it was in, on purpose which was absolutely crazy to me uh, I thought for sure that I was gonna have to bitch about comicsology <laughs> <laughs> in fact they, yeah i was definitely like this is fucking bullshit yeah why is this app doing this to me uh, <laughs> but also like props to them for and, and the you know to how they wrote it and how they created it because i i do see a lot of comics like even some of the ones we've read with marvel like i i think back to one of the best scenes that i read was the bit when th uh, in our most previous Marvel one where Thanos ripped the spine uh, or no, um, Doom ripped Doom. the spine out of Thanos thank yeah. you and like that was intense but like this this is another nice level where it's really illustrating the, you know, all of the aspects of it and yeah. I like that well like, not, like I don't know about you guys, when I was reading this issue I'm reading it slow and then Batman starts spiraling and he's like crawling on the ground. He's like, I found the crack, you know, and he's like doing like some crazy stuff. And like, yeah, you're like, what are you talking about, man? And it just, I just start frantically reading it faster because things are spiraling. Mm -hmm. Like, he get at one point, he finds a, sh it's a marble wall with the front of a ship jutting out from the front of it, and he climbs it, and the figurehead on the ship is an owl. And it turns its head to look at him, and Batman just like punches it straight off, and just crazy things just keep on happening. I mean, like uh, at one point he like sees a room filled with like cameras, and then he finds his parents down there, and like owls start attacking him, and that's when the pages go upside down when his dead parents' hallucinations turn into owls. That page is just straight up upside down. The, all the pages prior to that where like I was talking about the ship jutting out the wall and he's finding mm -hmm. the camera all that sideways so it's just like crazy ass shit um, yeah it was it was a crazy couple issues there I was like what the fuck is going on and that it got a little weird for me you know that 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 shit happened but you know what are you gonna do it's no it was, it, it's still a good portion of the story you know oh yeah, yeah. It, it's cool. And then, like, it was odd. I feel like we all had a very similar experience with it, where um, just it just was strange to read and disorienting, and it did its job. It was supposed to disorient, you know? Yeah. Um, and then. But I do like. Oh, my apologies. Uh, like, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You do you think? I do like how it showed towards the end of it that Batman had the upper hand. Like, because it's it started to remove the owl-like features of the core. Because they all, like, looked like owls, and it was really playing on, like, Batman's psychosis and all that. But then it 
removed his it showed batman having the upper hand because then he started to get bat like features yeah so that that's that's the third issue that's the the next one but i agree um the end of the the end of the second one is batman getting stabbed um yeah and then robin going to commissioner gordon be like you got to turn that signal back on uh, when the signal burn out because they all have been waiting for Batman. They have no clue where he's at, you know? Um, and I, it's sorry for interrupting you. I just got to, these issues that just had me excited. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Absolutely good. Um, and then before we get into the third one, just to say, like, everything's, like, topsy-turvy, of course. And then the last page, you're back on, like, the top of Gotham City to Police Department's rooftop. And then everything, it's like, that's all oriented normal. That's if nothing's happening. So it's very much, you know, Bruce's psychosis that, the, the, you know, everything is, like, being represented in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Shane, good segue, though, into the next thing. I mean, the, the talent takes Bruce and shows him to the court, and Bruce is seeing all these people as, like, owl monsters, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, as he slowly gets a hold of himself, that's as things start to change, and he kind of gets a, a hold on things. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of it's kind of cool. I mean, even even the the, the, it's, the stuff is kind of zany in this book too, because um, Batman's giant at one point, and all the uh, court are like getting sprawled off it. And I'm guessing that's kind of showing that the court themselves. They're not strong, you know. They're normal people. They're not like the talents, where they're these like super assassins. They're just normal people with money that run Gotham. Intimidating. Yeah. No, I enjoyed how they did that. Yeah. These issues um, in general, like I, I was just impressed that like. It went from, you know, I, I didn't think it could get any better. Yeah, well, it, honestly, like, I wish we could read all of Scott's Batman stuff. Unfortunately, we don't have access to all of it. But uh, if we did, it would, uh, it'd be great. I think you'd enjoy every step of it. Because it just, he does do this long build, and there's stuff that he gets to by the end of his batman run like all the way like with all the events and his justice league comic and like it ties back to like some of the first stuff and it's, it's really well done uh, but yeah i mean uh so bruce fights off the court you know and there's an old lady al like it just shows, shows you there's all different types of age they had someone from being the littlest girl put a sentence on him, like, you know, make him hurt more, she says to the Yeah, that child. little girl's fucked up, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's completely screwed. Ask the littlest one. What? <laughs> yeah, it's a little girl in a mask with a doll. She's like, fuck him up. Um, and then, to the, they got an old lady there, too. It's like when Batman escapes, um, which is also kind of cool with this. You see, like, Batman actually, like, prepared himself to, like, escape because he steals a piece from the camera from when he's going insane to, like, be able to strike a spark and blow the hell out of that uh, labyrinth. So, it's kind of cool. Even when Batman doesn't have a plan, he always has a plan. Always yep. has a plan. Yeah, and he falls into the... Uh, the fucking sewer but it looks like he's like i i'm curious to see how he escapes because he's definitely like stuck because he's like banging it looks like on some ice so i guess he's under ice inside the uh river and then it also looks like the uh court of the owls is going to open up the rest of those boxes and release For the, the rest talons. of the talents yeah uh, it's also another reason I'm interested in playing Gotham Knights is that story focuses on the Court of the Owls. 
Uh, I didn't want to say anything. Yeah. I, that's why I was so hyped for it at first, and then it started getting bad reviews, and I was like, I kind of want to wait, but I really wish I got it when it was $20. But now it's 70 again. I'm not paying 70 for it, so. Yeah, I'm not saying, paying 70 bucks for that. No, that's fair. 20 bucks, I can swing. Um, but I didn't do it. <sighs> well, uh, I don't really have much more on these books. We kind of went through all three of them. Uh, they're really, really cool books, especially the second one. Uh, I'm ready f for the next three. I can't wait to read them. But if I read them too soon, I won't have them in my memory next week. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Al, good to have you back. Sorry we're not doing Star Wars. Uh, hopefully hey, no, it's you. okay, man. You know, I got I to gotta deal with this family stuff, and then, uh, you know, yeah. we'll do that afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Uh, family comes first, always. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, we we'll, Just happy uh, to have you this week. I appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll get back to it, and then we'll do Star Wars, and it'll be awesome. Cool. S sounds good. Um, all right, well, I think that's it for us today. Um, you know, we appreciate you listening, and if yeah, you have any suggestions or comments, please uh, leave them in the comment section. Uh, and thanks for listening. All right, um, yeah. We're your hosts again. I'm Ian. I'm Al. And I'm Shane. And that was Comic Book Wednesdays. Good night, everybody. Night, y'all. Have a good night.